Well, good Thursday morning. Welcome to the WLBB Community Voice Program, our show brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. I'm your host this morning, Colin Worthington. My guests both are uh, great representatives of the Carrollton Police Department. No joke. I know you're going to want to chortle at that just a little bit. Um, although one of them doesn't mind physical punishment uh, to those who lose against him in uh, ping pong. And the other, quite frankly, saved my life this week. <laughs> uh, Brandon Padaris and uh, Chad Taylor, both our guests on this morning's program. You can check us out on the uh, Facebook Live page as well, News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. And, of course, streaming live online at Newstalk1330.com. Brought them in this morning. Uh, last Tuesday, I believe, yeah, we were doing election night coverage, and somebody had mentioned that uh, Chad had spoke at Rotary about uh, the gang situation here in Carrollton. I remember maybe four or five years ago, uh, Carrollton Police uh, put out a press release, <clears throat> or maybe just Joel, Chief Joel, talked about it. It seemed like it was news to a lot of people that we had uh, a gang issue in Carrollton. Uh, to a lot of people, they were like, oh, we've known this for 10 years. It's no big deal. But I uh, did want to kind of update the community on, uh, you know, if there is a situation in Carrollton, something we should be alarmed about. Initially, when somebody had told us about uh, you speaking at Rotary last week, they had, I think they had mentioned there were 45 gangs in Carrollton. We've decided that's probably not the number that was presented. No, that's, that's that a little meeting. bit high. Okay. Well, how many gangs do we have we in have, Carrollton? Right now, we have 12 documented gangs and about 30 subsets. And what's the definition of a gang? What describes a gang? Well, it's two or more identified by similar symbols, signs, color, moniker. Uh, basically, it's the police force, essentially, by mm -hmm. definition, is a gang. We all wear the same colors. We identify ourselves as police. Uh, but it's not the, the gang itself that's illegal. It's the criminal activity that goes along with it. And then what are uh, some activities that they're associated with? It goes back to the old RICO status that uh, from back in the mob days. Um, it's murder, rape, rob, anything from fraud to acts of violence, drug trafficking. Uh, it lays out specifically criminal gang activity. Pretty much any any act of violence falls in that. And as far as the RICO statute, that, that kind of has to do it. But you are working as a group. I mean, I, I guess I'm trying to go back and you know think about the mafia, but you're working for a group and maybe maybe one leader. So you're associating all these people uh, That's right. with, with crimes. It's not just like one person. It's like when there were more than one person uh, grouped up doing all these things. That's right. Um, the the law state, it, it kind of lays out, they, they call it the Iron Cross or the Triangle, uh, that you essentially have to prove that the gang exists, that the acts that they perform are criminal, and the gang benefits from those acts. Uh, and the person himself is a gang member or an associate of that mm -hmm. gang. So those three elements have to be in place before you can prosecute someone mm -hmm. under the gang act. It's not that we just get to show up one day and say, hey, this dude's a gang member. Let's, let's send him to prison forever. Um, the, the law lays out pretty clear the, the elements that require that. Are there groups out there that are acting as gangs or they want to be a gang, but you guys haven't you know, put them in that category yet, maybe because they don't fit some of those things? I would say that's always – Early on, especially in hybrid gangs, so hybrid gangs are, that's a, a huge element in what we deal with. Uh, people, when they hear the word gang, they automatically associate with the Bloods, the Crips, the Gangster Disciples. They see those. Latin Kings. The Latin Kings. Um, MS-13 is now big in the news. We, they, they associate themselves really quick, or they automatically, that's what they, they're, they see in their mind's eye. They, they see those red, the blue, the black. Uh, but a hybrid gang is a little bit different. It goes back to a little bit more like the like we talked about the mob days. It's more of a a, a localized, maybe a neighborhood based gang, a school based gang. They all come together because of where they live or where they go to school, or uh, and, and they, may, they may associate themselves with being a blood or a crip or a gangster disciple or even ghost face at times. But they come together and they work together, and they may not call themselves the Bloods. Uh, one local hybrid gang we have here now that Brandon and I have dealt with for several years is called YGG, the Young Go-Getters. Um, and some of those guys are Bloods. Some are Crips. Mm -hmm. uh, they may f go into the juvenile system. Say they go in the juvenile system and they, they automatically associate themselves or they fall into a, a, gang, a, a set of Bloods or they fall into a set of Crips. Well, when they come back out, if – Brandon and I, if we both went in the juvenile system and he was a blood and he was a crip, but we come out and we're neighbors and we've been friends for 10 years, that hard line is just not there that you used to see in the streets of L.A. We may associate ourselves together, 
and we well, all of a sudden we come up and we've got our group of friends and we're all gangbangers and we, we give ourselves a name um whether it's the you know we may be the bradley street boys because that's where we work uh, you know and in 2017 these guys were the most violent you know criminal street gang we had in town i mean out the young go-getters absolutely yeah these guys were far worse than our, our local crip street um subsets or our blood subsets gangster disciples even the ghost face guys that we had in town um these guys were were bad news um and i think some of the um, the, the uniqueness to these neighborhood street gangs that we have is that they gain their power off street cred. So they're a little bit more inept to pull a trigger, to try to um, move up on somebody else that's very dangerous, um, specifically on turfs and areas and locations in town. So these guys know that it may have started out as a group of friends, like Chad mentioned, that grew up together, maybe lived on the same street, went to the same school. But as time progressed, as criminal acts progressed, they started gaining the street cred and this respect attitude and um, this intimidation factor that kind of led them to do terrible things and a little bit faster to pull the trigger. And these guys were shooting up the place, something fierce. Chad right. Taylor, Brandon Padaris, our guests on this morning's Community Voice program. Did I interrupt you there? No, I, I was going to say that is a... See, I can't see your face kind of blocked by the microphone <laughs> there. But. That's a, that's actually a great point he touched on. <laughs> a currency these guys work in is... What, what they consider respect but it's truly just fear they want to instill fear and they want that street cred between their their friends and themselves and uh to me right now for a 14 or 15 yes. even 16 year old that's even more valuable than money we talked about violence um with the street gangs the is the, the, the ygg younger mm-hmm. getters and they're more inclined to be more violent than or more inclined to be uh, violent as opposed to the other gangs are there violence associated with other acts, or are they going out and seeking violence? I, I would I would argue seeking violence. Um, these guys specifically, their their kind of uh, mo was robberies and shootings and fights and intimidation. And they weren't like Chad mentioned the monikers and what actually defines a street gang. You know, a lot of times you people immediately think about hand signs and think about colors. Uh, in this day and age, it's not just cut and dry that way anymore. People just don't wear one specific color all the time and identify themselves. These guys are going out screaming YGG. They're screaming their name as they're doing these things, as they're pulling the trigger and drive-bys in broad daylight, um, you know, during fights and jump-ins and beat-ins and things like that. So um, these guys most definitely, that's kind of their, their avenue um, that we were dealing with at least specifically 2017 and 18. Um, were guys that just wanted to put their name out and did not care who saw or and they in fact they wanted people to see what they were doing and that's a a common thing with um, criminal street gangs anyways is is making sure people understand who they are so that they can intimidate other people uh, you mentioned just screaming their name you know screaming out their name out there you know, if that incites uh, violence in some way is that is that a uh, crime when they do that if they're not associated with any other activity at that point for them to scream out their gang name and now no, I mean, uh, if if they're not committing criminal acts, I mean, there's not a whole lot we can do again. Like Chad said, it's not a crime um, to be in a gang. So that's the one thing that people kind of get in their minds is, well, he's a gang member, you know, lock him up. Well, it doesn't work that way. They have to commit those criminal acts for us to actually move forward with criminal gang charges on them. So, um, you know, we're, we're protected. We're constitutionally, we're protected. We can hang out who we want to and we're allowed to. What changes that is the time that if me and Chad or the police or, the, you know, we get thrown in the Boy Scouts a lot, they wear similar colors and have their own hand signs and stuff. They can hang out with whoever you want to, but when you start meeting together to commit criminal acts together um, and to do so in a fashion that's um, consistent with these gangs, um, that's where it changes and crosses those lines. How many of the gangs that you are aware of here locally, how many are homegrown? I mean, and how many, you know, maybe come from Metro Atlanta or another city and, um, you know, were developed if they, you know, somebody spent time in jail? Well, we see our dynamic here is different in Carrollton. A lot of it, Honestly, it's because of the college. We see, uh, we bring people from all over the southeast. Mm-hmm. They come from different backgrounds, different settings. Uh, they bring their friends. Uh, so local gangs, they, they sometimes they click up with these guys that are, they may be a, a blood from Clayton County or a, a crip from DeKalb or a ghost face gangster. We've had a lot of ghost face come yeah. in from other places. Um uh, really to set up shop you'll see them try to begin clicks here so a lot of times you may have one local guy uh, i know several years ago brand and i were working a, a ghost face case along with the uh, sheriff's office mm-hmm. and we had three local guys 
but we were arresting people from Cobb County, from other areas. They were just coming in to kind of click up with these guys. They they had figured out uh, some different uh, criminal activity to, to make money, to help pay their dues, to fund different things. So it, it's a weird mix at times. Sometimes you'll have something that it may be a – um, Ghostface, prime example, is a, it's a Georgia-based gang. It was formed in the prisons here. So as they're coming out, they're going back to their respective counties, whether it's Harrelson, Carroll, Heard. Um, and then they're just linking up with their buddies because they've made these connections in, in prison. So they come here, and you've got two or three local guys, six or seven guys from other areas that come in, and they just set up shop. Brandon Pederis and Chad Taylor, our guests on this morning's Community Voice program, both of them with the Carrollton Police Department, and I want to say you're with the Narcotic, Narcotics and Gangs Unit. Is that accurate? Pretty close. Yeah. Right, pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> if you have questions or comments this morning, you can feel free to give us a call, or you can post uh, questions and comments on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. I'll take a peek at those during our break. We'll come back with more with these uh, gentlemen. After this, our show brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. At Oak Mountain Academy, our daily schedule includes convocation, prayer, and the Pledge of Allegiance. By doing so, we build a family-like community where all students grow and flourish and personal faith is encouraged. Through community service and a historical approach to biblical study, our students are taught the value of the warrior way, honesty, respect, and responsibility. Oak Mountain Academy, we are a family creating legacies. To learn more, visit oakmountain.us. At Tanner, we're advancing health throughout West Georgia and East Alabama because we know that exceptional care isn't based on how many patients we serve, but how well we serve them. That's why we're focused on quality, delivering the best possible care for our patients. It's why we're expanding our clinical services and building new facilities to serve our growing community. And it's why we're looking beyond our hospitals and medical practices to develop sustainable wellness and preventive health programs in our region. What makes a hospital great has changed. It's not how many beds we have. It's how well we care for the neighbors who need them. Delivering the right care to every patient, every time, is how Tanner is advancing health with medicine beyond measure. Learn more at Tanner.org or find a physician on our medical staff by calling 770-214-CARE. Hey, welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program. Our show brought to you by Tanner Health System, News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. And this morning, you can check us out on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. It is 843. I'm Colin Worthington, Chad Taylor to my left, Brandon Padaris to my right, both gentlemen with the Carrollton Police Department and talking about their work uh, with gangs in the community. Uh, I imagine some listeners, when they, when they hear about the gangs, probably wondering, okay, well, where are they? Where are, I'm not to say they haven't seen them, but you know, how close are they to, uh, to their own personal neighborhoods? Where, where are we seeing gang activity? All over the city? Yes, sir. Uh, most definitely. Um, there isn't one specific area in town that, you know, they're they're left to or contained at. I mean, it's everywhere. Um, like Chad says, we have our, our blood sets. We have our crypt sets. Um, we have gangster disciples, ghost face gangsters. We've got our neighborhood street gangs. Um, we have a, a few spotted uh, Latino gangs that we have in town. So a little bit of everything. Um, we do have local gangs that, that have kind of always maintained shop here in Carrollton for a long time since we started getting into gang investigations. And we've known that's been something that's passed along through generation to generation, like wow. the 8 Trey Gangster Crips um, and, and the um, – and our uh, blood sets that we have um, here in town are nine trays. So they've been here for a good while. There are specific localized street gang that's probably has the most in numbers. Some of our old schoolers, we consider them. But um, as for location, it's spread out. It just is. Um, and I don't think there's any kind of turf battle in Carrollton. There's not places where folks can't walk into. There might be a specific neighborhood or a street that you know enough folks live in that they can identify somebody else that they don't like or care for but it's it's not like tv um and specifically how what we're you know combating these days on these neighborhood street gangs and these small hybrid gangs is they may have started out in a specific area but once they've moved along once they've moved to different locations different streets or even different schools um they come back together to commit those crimes so it's spread out pretty good um and not localized in one area 
what can you guys tell us about um, um, how you track gangs? But you know, I mean, maybe there's some things you can't tell us about uh, how you're studying where they are and, and keeping your eye on them and things like well, that. What can you tell us about I the can, initiative to keep? So I, I can tell you the one thing to said. Carrollton's really ahead of the curve, I think, in our documentation, the direction that the state's going. Uh, a couple of years ago, well, let's go back a little bit. In 2011 was the last time they did a national survey, a study, uh, just to document the numbers of gang members. Uh, in 2011, the feds released that there was 1.4 million gang members in America, 33,000 gangs. Mm-hmm. Um, but they there was no numbers after that. Well, last year, the Georgia Gang Investigators Association, uh, which is – they drive the train a lot of, for investigations, for pushing uh, laws, uh, for pushing databases, for documentation and sharing information. Yeah. They did a study just in Georgia. And in Georgia, they they have 77,000 documented gang members with 1,500 different gangs. Mm-hmm. Um, but what what staggered the most, and I know him and I, we kind of shared the, the same shock factor, is 157 of the Georgia's 159 counties reported gang activity in their schools, mm-hmm. uh, which tells you that's our that's our battleground. And I know the governor, uh, Governor Kemp, when he came in, he ran on – he was going to combat gangs, and he's definitely done that. There's actually put in place a state platform for documenting, sharing information. Uh, we bought into that about two years ago uh, when it's called Formulytics. Uh, and it's a way to just kind of put all of our information together in one place and make it shareable between us to different agencies because what you were seeing was Brandon may be working a, uh, a, a crypt set, and he's got his own files, uh, but you have to go to Brandon to find that answer. Uh, and I may be working a completely different uh, blood set, and he has a question, but you have to come to me because I've got my file. So it was a, a, something that's able to really centralize our, our intel, our information, our sharing. Uh, so if another agency calls, we can say, hey, yeah, we've got intel on this. If we call, um, if we have an issue, say, at the college with a guy from Clayton County, you can call Clayton County and say, hey, what do you have on this guy? Mm-hmm. And they can send you a file. Uh, so that, that really has helped. And I know that the, the governor is, is pushing for that uh, and is making that happen. I think he allotted somewhere around $600,000 to get these other agencies on board. To be a documented gang member, I mean, is that just a reference um, is that just reference information for you guys, or do you have to? Would you have had to have done something to be on so that list? What, what we do, there's different ways. There's a there's a GDC documentation. So if you go into prison, uh, the Georgia Department of Corrections they have a whole list of things, and they they do it. They call it a security threat group. Mm-hmm. Uh, they look through because they they don't want to put a they don't want to put an inmate who's a blood in a pod with a bunch of crips that are feuding it's amazing you still have to think about all that too <laughs> so they come out and but we also have a system in place where you can either be we essentially list you in two categories if you come on the radar you're either a member or an associate uh you don't just naturally we just decide you're a gang member uh gang members we they're identified by through social media uh, do they wear the, the correct colors? Are they throwing up the signs? Are they associating with these guys? Mm-hmm. Are they self-admitted? That's a big one, a uh, self-admitted gang member. Uh, are they committing crimes? Have they been uh, prosecuted here in Georgia? Are they documented through GDC? That's uh, something we put into ours. And, and we that's when we make a determination whether you're a member, whether you're a full-fledged member, uh, were you brought into this, or are you an associate? Uh, and by the law, uh, associate – there's really not much difference in prosecuting a, a gang member and an associate. Yeah. Do all gang members have themselves identified? I mean, you talk about the, the Bloods and the Crips, uh, you know, with the colors before. I mean, if we're talking 15 gangs, are they all, in theory, supposedly wearing something that identifies them? I mean, and I just wonder, you know, if they're meeting oh. up with each other and see, you know, if they're passing each other on the street or in town. You know, things. there's subtle things in today's day. Um, again, we'll see Crips wearing red now. We'll see Bloods wearing blue. It's not like it used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, you might notice certain things, and we've taken a lot of training, whether it be on the state level through GGIA, on the national level, just ongoing, continuing education. And what we've come to find out is, um, you know, it might be in the way they stand. It might be what foot they put out. It might be a specific way they talk or use um, when they when they type on social media and what type of words and how they spell things. Um, it's such a, a, a large gambit of, of things that we have to look at to show small, okay, you know, they're wearing these colors a lot. That might be a very small thing that, that, that we take into consideration. But then we might see that the way they write um, – 
um, their letters on social media, if they cross things out, if they have certain tattoos on their bodies, how they're standing in certain places, um, how they associate's a big one. You know, are they always around other blood gang members? Mm. Is it something that you constantly see that we see over and over and over again? So these little things all add up to the big picture for us. And um, just because somebody's wearing blue walking down the street, we don't automatically assume that person's a crip. Um, yeah, it's, you're not. Okay. You're good. <laughs> we don't. We, morning, right? yeah. um, we don't automatically assume that, but it goes into consideration for us. Um, you know, and Formulytics, our, our database isn't a catch-all. It's not if you make it to the list, you're definitely a blood gang member now. It's just a database for us mm-hmm. to house information, share information and intelligence, and help us make better decisions and judgments on whether or not these individuals, when they're committing criminal acts, need to be prosecuted that way. Do gangs have markings, uh, territorial markings around town? I mean, I, I remember maybe four or five years ago having the conversation about seeing the shoes wrapped around the power lines. I mean, even just down the road here. On the yeah, there's, road. There's, I saw a sign two days ago down the road here. So. Yeah. Well, I will tell you, though, that is one thing we have. We see small clips of our graffiti. Yeah. Um, that's one thing for, for whatever reason, and I'm not sure what it is, probably because we, we combated it pretty early. Um, we would see stop signs marked, sides of houses marked. But over the years, I think they figured out, eh, we better stop doing that because all of a sudden, uh, you know, Chad, Brandon, JJ, they're showing up in our neighborhood because we've spray painted a sign here. And Bring it now, they're here okay. now they're here every day for the next two weeks. So, yeah. Well, you know, on the show, as you talk about, you know, we're able to combat this or we're doing good here. Do you worry that saying that you know, might intimidate or not intimidate somebody and motivates them to, to do something? I mean, is that is that I, a thought? Well, I, that's our job. Yeah. And I don't mean um, to you. I just no, need no, to go no. do if, more. I don't think so because yeah. really we've got the teeth of prosecution behind us. Um, the problem with them trying to do more or try to, to flaunt it more is really it makes our job easier. Mm-hmm. That makes our job so much easier for prosecution because once you get up there on social media and you throw all these gang signs or you're out here and and you're up here in town and you're you're wearing your colors and you're proud of it and then you commit crimes with three of your buddies that are in the gang with you, you've made our job easier. Mm-hmm. So for them to do that – I mean, and that just stacks time. The, the gang is a the gang act itself is an enhancement for sentencing. Uh, so that that is a scary thing for a, a defendant to come into court knowing that he's facing fifty years of jail time because of his acts that associated with the gang. And we're ahead of the curve, like Chad said. We're we have a community that supports us and backs us. We've got an agency. We've got a special prosecutor at district attorney's office that specializes in gang um, prosecution. And there are jurisdictions all over the state that refuse to identify and admit that they do have a gang problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that we're not in that situation. Our chief is behind us. Our city's behind us. It's not that we're overloaded with gangs here in Carrollton. We've always had them. We just are able to identify. We're honest enough to identify that we do have gang members here and that they're prepared to get behind us, send us to train, and make sure we've got prosecutors ready to do it. So we're armed. Um, and if they want to show their teeth, you know, I, I feel like uh, here in the city that we have the, the preparations and the ability to make sure that we can knock it down as best we can. Chad Taylor and Brandon Padaris, our guests on this morning's Community Voice program. We're going to come back with about five minutes left in our show. So if you'd like to make a comment or a question, I'll tell you, Meredith uh, Hill Browning said, hey. She said, hey. A lot of wise. And, uh, yes. A lot of wise, yes. yeah. And Ricky and uh, Ronnie Rayburn, uh, Ricky, of course, a police officer, says, good morning, gentlemen, and says you're a fine group of men. I- I'm assuming he's including me in that, too. Thank you, Ricky. <laughs> we'll uh, take our final break again, come back with about five minutes. Community Voice brought to you by Tanner Health System here on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. At Tanner, we're advancing health throughout West Georgia and East Alabama because we know that exceptional care isn't based on how many patients we serve, but how well we serve them. That's why we're focused on quality, delivering the best possible care for our patients. It's why we're expanding our clinical services and building new facilities to serve our growing community. And it's why we're looking beyond our hospitals and medical practices to develop sustainable wellness and preventive health programs in our region. What makes a hospital great has changed. It's not how many beds we have. It's how well we care for the neighbors who need them. Delivering the right care to every patient, every time, is how Tanner is advancing health with medicine beyond measure. Learn more at tanner.org or find a physician on our medical staff by calling 770-214-CARE.
Oak Mountain Academy has offered a challenging college preparatory education for over 50 years. With over 500 graduates, we have maintained a 100% college acceptance rate. Over 90% of our students earn acceptance to their first choice of college or university, and over the past five years, our students have earned over $10 million in scholarship offers. Our students are creating a legacy. Come, be a part of our family, and create your own legacy today. To learn more, visit us at oakmountain.us. All right, wrapping up our Community Voice program this morning here on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. Our show is sponsored by Oak Mountain Academy and Tanner Health System. Uh, get about four minutes left in the show. I'm Colin Worthington, Chad Taylor on my left, Brandon Padaris on the uh, right. Uh, things that you do miss during the commercial break. Brandon just did 42 push ups. Um, yeah. It was very impressive. For Kyle. Uh, an amazing for, for Kyle Jones. <laughs> That's true. Amazing feat. Um, as we do wrap up our program here, I was looking to see if we had any other questions or comments on and the questions coming through. But can you guys compare our situation? I mean, can you compare Carrollton's gang problem with uh, another community, another county? Well, I can. What I will say is what has helped us we brandon touched on us being ahead of the curve and a lot of that comes from buying in early from administration uh, we started in about 2012 seeing issues and by 2014 we were really pushing into the gang world and a lot of that came from the city buying in really early mm-hmm. uh, they said no we're, we're going to get it when we get asked the question what are you doing we're going to have an answer uh, and they provided a lot of opportunities for brandon and i uh, we've been in GGIA for several years. Uh, we've actually hosted uh, the, all the levels of gang certifications. Um, they sent us to Chicago a few years ago, we, mm-hmm. so we were able to uh, obtain our national certification as a national gang specialist. Uh, and that's not a lot for an agency our size for somebody to buy in like that. That comes at a cost. But I think it's paid off. I really do. Uh, because we are well ahead of the prosecution. We've ran about uh, around – 38 to 40 gang cases um and sometimes they they merge sometimes they get a trial sometimes they plead before and that includes juvenile all the way into adult court um so i think we're doing really well i really think we're right where we need to be i got about two minutes here guys probably my last question or last comment is there a danger to you You talk about flashing gang signs and you pick them out i mean you you can see the cutest girl, 16-year-old girl, uh, on Facebook doing those gang signs as well. Or, you know, maybe they're not gang signs, but it's some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of sign. Yeah. Um, is, is there a danger in doing that? You well, know, parents, I mean, should parents talk to their kids about doing that? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that you should, we should intervene really early if you see that issue. And they may even not even be affiliated with a gang well, or ever, but, no. but the fact they're doing that is a concern. it's socially accepted now, mm-hmm. unfortunately. In today's day in entertainment, I mean, you see our biggest entertainers and our, our sports idols and sports everybody. Team. I mean, people just have it out there, so our youth are going to think this that this is okay to do. They're going to start um, copying some of those and imitating those gang signs. Depends on where you're at, um, you know, in terms of specific danger. Um, we can't say without certainty that somebody's not going to get offended by it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know it's accepted, and you might see it all over social media and in the news. Um, however, you know, when people are doing this stuff, there's still folks out there who take it very seriously, and it's still a part of how they identify themselves, how they gain that street cred. So it's a different day and age we live in, but um, I think you got to be careful with it for sure. So should the we got one minute left? Should the community feel comfortable uh, reaching out to you guys if they suspect some sort of gang activity? And yeah, you know, I suspect you guys are probably aware of um, most of it going on and where it is, or you know where to look. But I mean, should the community feel comfortable in calling you guys? Oh, say, hey, I saw this and I suspect it. Absolutely, call us. We will uh, we'll let you know what we're seeing, or maybe even explain what you're seeing mm-hmm. that your kids starting to to draw or you know throw some hand signs we'll be glad to help we'll be glad to talk to kids anything we can do for early intervention yeah chad taylor brandon padaris with the Carrollton police department narcotics and drugs and gangs and all kinds of other stuff department appreciate you guys coming out this morning thank you, thank you. appreciate it Colin. and thank you too for uh, listening to us in your car or at home or watching us on the news talk 1330 facebook page this morning tomorrow i believe we're back to the arts we'll be talking about uh, an art event that's coming up with uh, Villa in Villa Rican. So uh, tune in for that tomorrow morning at 8:30, News Talk 1330 FM 106.3.